Hi, it's Jan Beta, and today I want to take a closer look at something that many of you probably aren't aware that Commodore made, and that is this Commodore calculator. If you're watching this channel, you're probably aware that Commodore famously made a lot of 8-bit and 16-bit computers in the 80s and 90s, right up to their untimely demise and unfortunate demise in 1994. But before that, they were actually a general business machines, hence the name Commodore Business Machines manufacturer. And among other things, including office furniture, and all kinds of office machines, they made calculators. And that was their main business actually in the 70s. Before that, they even made mechanical adding machines, tabletop stuff, but then they turned into an electronics calculator manufacturer and marketer. So this is a Commodore solid state electronic calculator from that era that lasted until the late 70s when Texas Instruments actually decided to make their own calculators and not just provide chips to other calculator manufacturers. Commodore used Texas Instruments chips for these, allegedly. And TI wanted to make their own, so they raised the prices for their competitors and Commodore was basically run out of the calculator business, which then led to Commodore getting into their own chip manufacturing. They famously bought MOS and started making computers, actually. So that led to Commodore making computers, one of the major factors that made Commodore get into the computer market and buy their own chip manufacturing company was TI raising prices on these calculator chips that Commodore used previously. I'm not sure if this uses a TI chip or an MOS chip already. We are going to take a closer look at this. And this is not going to be a very in-depth technical video, but I'm just going to marvel at this beauty here which I found on eBay a while back. I had this sitting in my lap here for quite a while and I'm going to do some restoration work on this and see if it actually still works. It did when I briefly tried it after I got it. it comes with the original packaging, which is pretty worn out, but it still looks kind of what it looked like when this was new. Commodore Electronics Calculator. This is Commodore's model 797D, which came in some different color combinations over the years. I think these were produced in the time period of 1976 to 1978, which was the year I was born. So this is probably slightly older than me even. Really antique. <laughs> And these came in different color combinations. Some of them had beige or white cases with black keys. Uh, this is the one with a black case and colored keys, which uh, represent the logo colors of the Commodore Chicken Lips logo. So this looks in really nice condition. It was probably stored in this during its whole life. And this takes a power supply with a plug. I don't know what it is, I think something like a phono plug. We're going to figure that out when I open this. And it takes a 9 volt battery, which I have sitting here already. And this just goes into these contacts, which are a bit worn out, but probably this is going to do. Let's see if this powers up or if it's dead. Let me take a couple of seconds to thank the sponsor for this video, PCBWay, my favorite manufacturer of prototype PCBs of all kinds. They also do CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication. They can populate your boards for you. Basically everything the tinkerer needs. So I highly recommend checking out the link in the video description in case you're interested. Back to some Commodore calculatoring. So here goes nothing. Oh, it's actually displaying a zero that you can even see. Let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
eight digits here. This is not a very sophisticated calculator. They had much more functions on some of their bigger models, but this is a very basic one. But it has memory and things like that, so we can probably store this in memory and delete and see if we can recall that. Memory works. Nice. So this seems to be working. Yeah, and I love these little displays. Just really old school. This was pre-LCD displays. So I think these are LEDs. Looks really cool. These some versions of the Commodore calculators, which are special versions, also had a green display, which was pretty uncommon at the time. This seems to be a fully working calculator. So of course I'm going to take it apart and take a look inside. I'm going to remove the battery first. I'm, I'm trying not to destroy this because it is such a nice piece of history. Serial number 15,455. I don't know how many of these they sold, but probably quite a few because this is like a standard calculator that is really suitable for small businesses and for home use. And there weren't a lot of calculator manufacturers around then, I think. Let's just see. Try to get this open some kind of non-destructive fashion here. There we go. Okay, and somebody put a bit of cardboard in there to hold the battery in place, which probably is a good idea. The sponge still seems quite good. That is interesting. There's already a Commodore branded chip in there. This already seems to be an MOS made chip. I'm not sure when Commodore bought MOS actually, but probably prior to the release of the PET and the Kim 1, which was in 1976. And this chip seems to be from the 18th week of 1976. Yeah, there's the display portion. I'm going to clean this up really thoroughly. And yeah, of course, the battery, which allegedly goes around here really to have some strain relief. That's basically all we can see here. And this is going to be the main calculator chip, which is basically these uh, calculators were just one chip and a bit of supporting logic, probably. Maybe not. Maybe this is a one chip model. What are these screws? Oh, they are kind of security screws that have not Phillips screws. Well, I'm probably going to be able to get in here with a slotted screwdriver. I'm not sure. Let's look at the label first didn't look at that. So this says made in Japan again. I think 76 as well. 176526. Not sure. Let's uh, try and remove these screws here carefully. That's a wider blade uh, screwdriver. Slit, slot screwdriver. That should do fine. Just going to remove all of these. Risking as the keyboard. Probably there's not much more in here. There's one chip to drive the LED screen. Maybe there's another chip in there somewhere that does the calculating stuff. But I think at that point they probably had that integrated into one chip already. Not sure. We're going to figure that out. Single-sided circuit board, of course, because there's not a lot going on. And the circuit board is mainly going to be carbon contacts, allegedly, for the keyboard, I believe. Commodore also made wristwatches at one point, which is quite interesting. <clears throat> so they could literally supply everything for the business people. <laughs> uh, this is screwed down. The, the socket there for the plug is screwed in a bit. So let's see if we can loosen that. Yep, there we go. Yeah, and that's all <laughs> that's in here. So it's literally that one chip and these are just the contacts that are closed by these uh, carbon infused rubber pads on the keys. And a lot of solar residue, they probably soldered this by hand. And then our nice LED bubble display here. I just love these things. And if you imagine that uh, shortly after that, these were discontinued and replaced by liquid crystal displays. So this is kind of, historic. It's kind of neat to have this. I don't know if I'm going to actually use this, but yeah, this is all there's to it. Oh, this is the on-off switch, actually, this little flap here. That makes sense, of course. This is 
the on off switching. So I'm just going to clean this up a bit with some contact cleaner and some alcohol and there's not much else to see. Nothing to see here. Move on. Yeah, this is just held in by the spring tension there. So yeah, I'm just going to clean these contacts, although they look pretty clean, but I'm still going to wipe them off a bit. I generally give the case a bit of a cleaning, but that should be probably all I have to do. I don't even have to do this because this clearly was working or is working. This is so clean that I don't even... I'm not sure. The on-off switch looks a bit dirty, so I'm just going to wipe that a bit. Yeah, that makes it better. There's a bit of dirt on there. Just going to wipe these gold-plated contacts a tiny little bit. The display looks so clean that I'm not even going to touch that. Probably the uh, little window here, which is tinted red. I guess the LEDs also are red. Could have a look at that. Just going to get rid of some of the dirt in here. The connector for the power supply is literally just connected to the same terminals the battery is, so you can't have a battery and the power supply in here at the same time. Very simple design. But this is uh, one of their lower tier models. The better ones are actually going for quite some high prices on eBay these days. I'm using very mild contact cleaner on these carbon contacts here, which usually is a good idea. Yeah. But other than that, there's not so much to do on this. Maybe a bit of contact cleaner on the on-off switch there. Yeah, I kind of want to try to turn this on to see which color the LEDs are. I think they are going to be red. So we should be able to just short this out here. Yeah, there we go. And they are red. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you probably can. Yeah, that's all that's to it. One chip, battery in there, and then that's a calculator. With the keyboard, of course. You need something to input stuff. And the display to output stuff. And this might just be the same size as a regular headphone plug. Let's try. Uh, yeah, this is just a 3.5 millimeter. One of these, but with only two contacts. So I'm probably going to make a power supply cable for this at some point. Should take 9 volts as the power supply. Just like the 9 volts supplied by these 9 volt batteries. There's nothing fancy, no voltage regulation, anything going on. The cables from the battery are just the same connections that the plug power supply used. Just going to put this part back together now. Pretty cool that this still works after all those years. But I mean, it's probably very simple. The chip is not going to be super sophisticated. Probably has uh, large traces in there that are not as prone to failure as more modern chips with uh, more layers and thinner transistors in there and things like that. But this is actually not a bad design, so these were had a fairly good reputation at this point, I think, for a reason, because they are reliable, as it turns out. And there's actually not much that can go wrong except the chip that could, of course, break over the years, which it is eventually going to do, because nothing lasts forever. Yeah, that's uh, the whole construction. I think I'm just going to clean this part up a bit, carefully, and then uh, close this up again. Yeah, it basically looks as good as new, except for some scratches on the backside, which is remarkable, given that this, as we found out, is from 1976. So, in go the case screws. I would now really like to look into the earlier electronic calculators where they actually used TI chips and maybe their more sophisticated models from later. But yeah, of course I don't have any of that and they are pretty expensive. I am going to bend these uh, battery terminal fins a bit inwards because that's, they seem pretty loose. Yeah, that's better. Let's see if we still can turn this on. Yes, no problems whatsoever. It also has an arrow display. It shows an E there. And these are weird because you have to look at them at an angle as the camera is pointing at this at an angle. That's probably the perfect angle. But if you look at them like I just did from uh, the top, you can't really see 
the numbers correctly so the display is angled as we've seen. I'm going to give this side a wipe too. And then maybe what I'm probably going to try to do is to make this Commodore logo a bit more silver again. That is uh, originally silver. The Commodore name here, Commodore, this is the other Commodore logo that's uh, black on these from the pictures I've seen. And this is the chicken lips logo in the corner here. That is originally silver. So I'm going to try to repaint that after I give this a quick wipe. There are some black spots on the keys. I wonder if we can get the, those off. Not really. That's probably some kind of marker or something soaked in there for the last decades or so. Yeah, there are some spots on the keys that I can't seem to get off and I don't want to risk damaging this. And you can see that it's a Commodore straight away by just by the colors of the keys, as I said. Which is kind of clever marketing. So as for the silver paint, I got some of these liquid chrome markers, which are really shiny, chromey colored. And they are like uh, lacquer markers. Adam Savage, one of the large maker YouTubers, is using this stuff all the time. He even uh, empties these pens out and uses it as spray paint and things like that. And he says this is the best chrome color you can get. So I'm going to assume this is good enough for recoloring my Commodore logo here. I think I'm going to tape off most of it around it to not risk getting that stuff in here. And I'm going to have some alcohol and a rag ready here next to it while I do it. And then hopefully this should be pretty much back to its original look. So yeah, let's see. Yeah, this is really silvery, so let's just dive right in, I guess. Wow, okay, this works really well. <laughs> yeah, that worked way easier than I anticipated. Look at that. That looks like a shiny Commodore logo to me. It's not quite as shiny as originally printed, I think. But yeah, this is how these looked pretty much. And I now have a very fancy Commodore themed calculator, which I'm super happy with. I redid some of the corners on this Commodore logo slightly and uh, got rid of the smear that I had here. And now it looks really nice, except for some spots on these keys where someone probably used a ballpoint pen to type, which I guess is a nice 1970s or 80s move. So uh, this is kind of impossible to get off, I think. The color or the ink is really resilient. I couldn't manage to get those spots off here. If you have any ideas about how to get this uh, ballpoint pen ink of these keys, which probably sat there for like 40 years, put them in the comments. But other than that, I'm really satisfied with how this turned out. This is of course more of a collector's item than something I'm actually going to use. I have other calculators that are much easier to use and much better actually. I also found this Sharp calculator, which is from the 80s, I believe, in the trash recently, which also it already has the LCD display, more modern calculator, pretty much the same functionality, except this one can't do square roots, but this one can. I'm using this a lot, actually. This is always sitting on my table here. And this, interestingly, also has a kind of a similar color theme going on with the blue, red and white. <laughs> but I like the Commodore one. A lot better, of course. Maybe I'm even going to use this on a day-to-day -day basis. But it's probably going to draw a lot more current than the more modern ones. So, yeah. Yeah, I guess that's it for today. Not much more I can say about this. If you have any anecdotes or any stories you would like to tell about Commodore's calculator making days, feel free to post them in the comments. I'm sure people are going to read them and smile. I'm pretty happy with my new or old Commodore calculator here and 
Hope you found this video interesting or as interesting as I found digging into this and looking what makes this actually work. That's it for today. Thank you so much for your comments and your other interactions on these videos and thank you for your time. Hope this was enjoyable and interesting. Special thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon and on Ko-fi and on the YouTube channel memberships page and elsewhere. The links are in the video description. Hope to see you again on this channel sometime. I'm Jan Beta. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye!